very good, was it? Something definitely happened in the front diff there. And there seems to be something wrong at the back. I'm going to have to inspect them both. I'm kind of getting to the point with this truck that I feel like it's time to do the rebuild and strip out the old electronics that were out. Had all sorts of different functions were built into it. I've had all sorts of various modules on this and including a rear sensor, a reverse sensor and LEDs. I've been here to tell me where I was getting close to and stuff like that. Um, so what I'm planning to do is something like that actually is to move the cab down to here, redesign this front section and um, and add the back. Uh, but that's in the future and definitely probably more than one video. For the moment I've got to do something about this uh, lead plate here that needs to be reattached. I might actually use the weights that I got out of my uh, little scavenging video for uh, from the base of the vacuum cleaners charging tar and get one of those here. I might not we'll use one at the front again for servo clearance. I wouldn't mind trying to run it with shorter springs um, or weaker springs or no springs maybe just to see um, but then I'll be riding quite decked and I don't want to abuse that lovely servo I've got in the front here anyhow for now I'm gonna have to take off me steering assembly and open up and open up the back as well and have a look at what damage I've done I do think that this body f looks a lot better, like kind of a little Unimog uh, style or so, a little. Yeah, maybe something different on the front, maybe bring this uh, like that. Anyway, that's the beauty of designing yourself, you can always redesign it. Let's get into it. I think you see the problem there. Well, I think this is needing a uh, proper dismantle and some TLC. I imagine I've got the same problem on both ends. For now, I'm just going to expel that water. Soak in there overnight, take it apart, re-grease everything and whatnot in the morning. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's a uh, proper soup, that. Some crap in there too. I don't think it's any tooth. I think it's misalignment of the, um, of the gears. That's what poured out of the diffs. It's really easy to forget just how much maintenance you need to do when you run your stuff like this. You run it through the thick mud. The uh, fine particle mud can get in there and it'll just make a mess of things. So uh, remember to get greasy and love your machinery. All right, so. And you can see this all needs to come out and get clean. See quite a nice assembly. There's, you can pull this apart pretty easily. So uh, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take all this out and clean it and see what my bearings are like. One thing to note with these sort of cheaper, 
cheaper um, differentials. Uh, this particular design, this whole piece can move back and forth in this direction and it messes with the alignment of the teeth and it could be that I need to glove up in a vain attempt to keep reasonably clean so these are just locked tight in they're not incredibly tight I don't know but So you can hear the difference in the sound there. When I spin it, it definitely, definitely makes a difference as to how those, how nicely those teeth go together, the position on there, and you, you hold the position with these two retaining. correctly I've got to undo here and here to slide out the axle I'll we'll put this back on with a couple of screws to make handling easier I might try to seal this up but I think the main issue will be ingress of water through the back bearing and along the axles not so much this because when it was sealed up you know there was nothing dripping out until I opened it up and it poured out I don't think there's much I can do about that apart from a little bit more regular maintenance so as you can see there's a fair bit of TLC that's accrued up on this my lead plating underneath is quite obviously detaching it has a lot of weight added to it and used to have plating here however that is unfortunately somewhere in the garden at the moment I'm not entirely sure where uh, so I'm going to replace that and uh, this uh, plating up here has become detached and needs a fixing properly um, but you know this happens when you use them rough and uh, kind of go a little bodge at the beginning just to see what the uh, effect is and then just sort of leave it there. All right, anyway, let me get to uh, removing the, um, the diff from the front. And I think the back I can actually do by lifting the frame, the, uh, the A frame on the top here off and uh, and then just sliding the axles out and whatnot. And uh, of course I'm doing it here, but we'll get to the back. I'm gonna close it up um, whilst I get the front out. And I'll get the front out and uh, set up over there to do a full, full McGubbins on that.
bit of movement there. A little bit. I mean, there's always going to be a bit of movement. It's not such a made part, but. Yeah, it definitely looks like that. <laughs> there it is. It's just my main bearing. Well, I'm here, I'll take the back off. I'm missing a bolt. Down. Can tell that one was loose. That rub. When I looked inside this one, the uh, the main gear wasn't pressed over. And even even though this has still got a pretty rooted bearing there. a bit of setting up to do and a bit of cleaning up to do and get ready to do some work on this while I've got the uh, open area so the ESC is just under here or over there and there's a fan here and blows there just over the motor ESC has a fan as well to call itself metal chassis rails and cross member and we have plastic plastic on that but that uh, and plastic and then metal and I've got my own 3D printed uh, cross members cross member um, or do I? no it was from the uh, larger longer configuration so it's just down to the the chassis and then my uh, own designed quite chunky quite massive shock towers start see these two mounts here and here and here and they tower in and then go out so this supports all the way up here down there it's quite quite strong and the same deal you can see some of the structure of them at the back um, anyway enough talking and more spanner spinning Unfortunately, if I include all of that in this video, you will be here for the next half an hour at the very least. So I'm going to put that in another video and leave you with some juicy slow-mo footage of the crawler on a nice little section of rock. If you like the video, please hit that like subscribe button and hit the notification so you can get notified of the part two that'll be coming out. Look at that lift. I just I just gotta say I love slow-mo. It gives that tire. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching again. Please hit the like button too. And if you want to ask any questions, don't be afraid to pop them down below. No matter how stupid you may think they are, because I'm sure I've made a big enough fool of myself in these videos already. You can't be stupider than that. Anyhow, stay well and have a great day.